Welcome to this month's episode of the Visa Hour called Education in the USA. I'm Robin Diallo. I'm the Public Affairs Officer and I'm Chairman of the Board at the Public, the PIF, the Fulbright Organization here. And this episode of the Visa Hour is live streamed via, via Google Plus Hangouts on Air and can also be viewed on demand at youtube.com slash US Embassy Manila. Are you interested in studying in the US? I hope so, because we are going to tell you everything about it right now. You can ask questions, post them on Twitter using the hashtag TheVisaHour, or on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash manila.usembassy. So I wanted to say hi and introduce this episode because I think it's really important to understand what we're talking about here. The most important thing about studying in the United States is having a goal. Why do you want to study in the US? What is your goal in life? Okay, that's important. If you don't know what you want to do, the United States is far away, it's expensive, there's a lot of paperwork, so you have to know what you have to do. So anytime you're looking at higher education, the most important thing is your goal. What do you want to do? And then the question is, if an education in the United States is the best way to achieve that goal? If the answer is yes, or even if the answer is maybe, then I hope you'll come talk to us at the Philippine American Education Foundation or at the U.S. Embassy on our Facebook page, Twitter, because we can help you figure out how to achieve your goals and how to get an education in the U.S. There are lots of ways to do it, and one of the problems is we have over 3,600 universities in the United States, so you have to not only have a goal, but then how do you choose the right school? Actually, there's probably many schools that would be just perfect for you, but we can help you narrow down the list so that you have better choices and you know exactly what you're going to do and how to get there. And of course, everybody thinks that the hardest part about studying in the U.S. is getting a visa. That's not true. That's probably if you've done all your homework and you have your goals and you know what you want to do and you've chosen your school and you know how you're going to pay for it, the visa is kind of the easier part. And we've got our visa officers here to talk to you about that. So I want to let you know that it's up to you. You have to decide what you want to do and does an education in the U.S. make sense? And I just want to spend one minute on common sense. And I want to tell you, when I was a visa officer, I want to tell you my story of somebody who wanted to study in the U.S. And you, right now, are going to be the visa officer, and you tell me if this story makes sense and if you would give this person a visa. So a man comes to me in his mid-30s, and he says, I want to study in the U.S. And he gives me the form, and I say, oh, where do you want to study? He says, oh, it's on the form there. I, I don't know. It's like, oh, how did you choose this school? My friend goes there. He says it's fun. Oh, what do you want to study? Well, I don't know. Maybe law or maybe computer science. Oh. And I said, so once you're a lawyer or a computer scientist, then what do you think you're going to do? He goes, well, I don't know. Maybe I'll stay in the U.S. and get a job. <clears throat> now, would you give him a visa? Does that make sense? So no, it didn't make sense. I said, no, you have to have a better reason than it's fun and I don't know what I want to study, and I want to stay in the U.S., right? But I have to tell you the end of the story. A little while later, the ambassador in this country, not in the Philippines, called me up and said, Rod, you 
do just refuse somebody a visa. I said, yes, sir. He said, oh, why? And I explained to him. And he said, thank you very much. I'll let the president know. Because the applicant was the president's nephew. And the president's nephew we sent for education advising with our education advisors. And I'm not sure if he ever actually went to school in the States, but I want you to think of that story when you're trying to choose your school and then when you apply for a visa because it really has to make sense. Okay? So today we have with us here MJ, a recently returned Filipino student who got his master's in sports psychology at Texas Tech. Marcus Jarwin Manalo, but you go by MJ. Yeah, I go by MJ. Yeah. Welcome. How was it? Um, overall, it was a it was a great experience. I mean, from meeting other international students to the actual um, studying, um, the actual graduate school, um, it, it was a great experience overall. Really, I mean, I can I can be more um, thankful for the opportunity given me uh, given to me to to study in the U.S. So, what message do you have for other Filipinos who might want to study in the U.S.? Well, I just um, highly encourage everyone to to take their chances. Um, this is going to be an amazing experience for everyone. Um, uh, as I've mentioned earlier, um, you're going to meet other um, international students there. You're going to be more culturally aware, uh, be more aware about cultural diversity. And and besides, um, the, the U.S., I believe, provides the, the best avenue um, for us to hone our craft to the fullest, so to speak. So uh, I think the U.S. can provide um, the um, qualifications that, that we need in order to meet our professional goals. So, so mm -hmm. yep, just take your chances. Um, it, it's not, not really hard to apply as long as you have the, the requirements, as long as you have the necessary documents. Um, it, it's not really hard to apply. Did it? Did when I was talking about common sense, does your goal make sense in having a goal? Did yeah, that, yeah, did, yeah. Was that right? Yep, definitely goal setting is very important. So um, it will also motivate you actually because while you're there doing your graduate studies, um, there will be some times when you're feel when you're going to question your, your decision. Why am I still here? I should just be in my home country with my family. Uh, but then when that time comes, um, you're just going to go back, you're just going to reflect on your goals. Like, like, what did I, or, or how did I decide to, to go mm -hmm. here? So you're going to go back to your goals, and then your, your goals is just going to motivate you. It's just going to exactly. motivate you to keep on going. How long were you there? I was there for two and a half years. And did, was it, did it go fast? Yeah, it was fast. If you're, if you're busy, as, uh, you know, even in our daily lives, it's very busy for you. Yeah. If we're busy doing things, then, then time just flies. And so, when I said before that if you have your goals and you know and you do your research and it all makes sense, the visa is the easy part. Yep. Is definitely. that true? Definitely. Tell definitely. them. Definitely. Uh, applying for visa is the easiest part, again, as long as you um, already made up your mind with um, where school you're going, what, what degree uh, you're going to get, or what course you're going to get, and then as long as you have all the requirements needed, all the information are on the website. Um, there's the um, Education USA uh, under Philippine American Educational Foundation and it can help you with um, the advising. Um, basically, they're going to provide you all the information that you need about educational opportunities in the U.S. So, so it's not really hard. Yeah. Now, one thing that's hard is that it's expensive, and that's true. And I have two sons in college. It's expensive for everybody. But the Philippine Education, the Philippine American Education Foundation, PIF we call it, which is why I keep tripping over the name, can help with some ideas for how to pay for it. So the Philippine American Educational Foundation website, www.fulbright, F-U-L-B-R-I-G-H-T, only one L, dot org, dot PH. Also on Facebook, Philippines.FulbrightCommission or EducationUSA.Philippines on Facebook. 
So there's lots of information and we want to help you and we want to help your parents because we know sometimes parents are very nervous about this. Tell me about that. I, of course, I experienced that. And after, um, um, after deciding on the school um, or the university where I'm going to um, go, I went to uh, the Education USA for advising. And and I, I looked for assistance programs um, that were going to help me throughout the application process. And I was fortunate enough to reach the um, PIFE website, the Philippine American Educational Foundation. So they helped me um, with the initial expenses of my education and also um, with um, my tuition for the first uh, few semesters um, um, because they granted me a partial scholarship. Which which really helped a lot. Who did um, the Philippine American Educational Foundation? Okay. So, and um, aside from that, I also applied for teaching assistantship um, in the university, right. and I was fortunate enough um, um, to be hired as their um, teaching assistant. And so I had this monthly stipend and then some waivers in the the tuition as well, which really helped a lot. That helps a lot. That helps a lot. Yeah. I did my master's. I did my undergrad at Michigan State University, which for all of you is the best university in the United States. Do you believe that? Uh, yeah, sure. Good job. <laughs> anyway, I think some of our other people who are going to talk later might disagree with me. And I did my master's at the University of Southern California, and I was a teaching assistant, so I got tuition. I, the tuition was paid for, and I got a small monthly stipend. So this, it, it really is possible to do this. Um, anything else um, that you want to share about this? Oh, what are you doing now? I'm actually about to start teaching um, in the university level um, this coming June. So and did your U.S. education help you get this job? Definitely, definitely. Okay. Everyone speaks highly about um, U.S. education. I think uh, my U.S. education really boosted my, my chances of getting those um, teaching jobs. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. And that's what we like to say. We think that the United States has the best education in the world. It's not the only education, and sometimes you can get a good education right here in the Philippines. So if that makes sense, that's a good education. But we really are proud of our education system. So any other last minute, I want to pass it to the real experts, our visa officer and our PIF education advisor. So. Any last thoughts for our? Oh, I just really encourage everyone to to take their chances and uh, visit the the PIF website, the Education US um, USA website, and um, all the information that you need are going to be there. Yeah, because doing your homework is the most important thing. Please don't go to your visa interview and say, <laughs> "I don't know the name of my school." My friend said it was fun. <laughs> okay, have a goal. Get your do all your homework and know what you want to do. And I'm sure that for some of you, that will be awesome. Because it was awesome, yeah, right? It was awesome. That's my it was word. It an amazing so. experience. Okay. <laughs> so now I would like to introduce our Vice Consul from the non-immigrant visa section of the U.S. Embassy, Diego, and Eileen Consuelo Valdecanas, we call her Khan, who is a Program Officer and Educational Advising Coordinator for the Philippine American Educational Foundation, or PIAF. So they're going to talk to you, and I hope we're getting some questions on Twitter, hashtag the Visa Hour, Facebook, and we'll, we're going to turn it over to them. Thank you very much. We'll come and say goodbye to you. Ask them or talk to us on Facebook anytime. Very best of luck. And thank you for watching. Welcome back. Hi, uh, my name is Juan Valdecanas, and I'm the Educational Advising Coordinator from the Philippine American Educational Foundation, or PAEF. We're also known as the Fulbright Commission, and here in the Philippines, 
we host the Education USA centers all over the Philippines. As an Education USA center, we help or we assist students who are interested in studying in the U.S. Um, so uh, if you have been um, uh, watching this episode uh, much earlier, uh, Robin mentioned about figuring out uh, which school uh, rightly fits you and if you have all the documents that you need um, ready, uh, just like what MJ said, then you are ready to apply for your student visa. And with me this afternoon is Diego from the non-immigrant visa section. Uh, as you may see, I have a very awesome hat on my head right now, and this is the best university in the United States. <laughs> it's the University of Arizona. I also wear it on my tie. So I uh, just wanted to show you that this is probably the best school that you can aspire to, and if you're lucky to get into it, you'll be very lucky because I went there. <laughs> uh, but one thing I wanted to mention to follow up on what Khan said is once you decide what school you want to apply for, uh, feel free to apply. Do your research, look at what schools offer what type of programs. The United States has all kinds of different things you can study from, you know, you can even take Tagalog lessons and uh, classes in the United States. Uh, but once you figure out what school you want to apply to, apply and maybe you'll get the great uh, notice that you've been accepted. Once you get the, with that acceptance letter, you'll work with your school and you'll discuss how you're going to finance your education. Uh, education in the United States is kind of expensive. Um, there's different yes. ways to get that financed. Maybe your family can help pay for it, or there's other things available like scholarships. Like assistantships. Yeah, assistantships. Fellowships. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll work with your university and your, or your college, and you'll figure out how you're going to do that. When you guys have that conversation with your, your education, um, your school, you'll get issued something called an I-20. They'll give that to you. That's a very important paper so you'll have that so then what you want to do immediately then is apply for the US visa so go to the website and apply for a US visa and pay for the fee it's about hundred sixty dollars and you can pay for that at the, at the local bank here so what you got your I-20 you have your you got your um, appointment letter you're good to go so you'll go to the embassy and you'll have these with you so what do you want to bring with you to the embassy what do you think you need to bring well, all you really need to bring is your passport, because that's where we'll put the visa, your appointment letter, and your application. You would have already gone online and typed in your application saying why you're going to apply for a visa in the United States. This form is also called, sometimes called the DS-160. So once you have that, you'll also have your I-20, and hopefully by then, you will also have paid the SEVIS fee. <laughs> Also called the SEVIS fee, so we'll also keep a. That's someplace else you have to pay. Um, that's on the uh, another website. We'll have that link for you available. But you have to have a receipt for that. So then you see, you'll come and you'll have an interview with someone like me or one of my colleagues, and you'll need to explain to them what your plan is and why you want to study in the United States. And like we've heard before, it needs to make sense. You need to explain why you selected that school. Um, and more importantly, you know, how are you going to finance it? And that's why the I-20 is so important. All the details are there. It's all the details in there. So we'll look at that and we'll say, wow, okay, it looks like the parents are going to pay for some of this. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they have a, some good scholarships. Mm -hmm. This looks like it's viable. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the school is accredited. And the school is accredited, correct. We, and that's also something the SEVIS fee helps us ascertain as well. Mm -hmm. But after we look at that, we'll see this and we'll ask you some questions. But we also want to know what your plans are after you complete your studies. And this is really key because we want to know, we'd, we'd not like not to hear people say, well, maybe I'll just live in America. We'd like not to hear that. What we'd like to hear is people say, I want to learn what I can in the United States, take this degree and come back to the Philippines and use it in the Philippines to improve the whatever in the Philippines. So those are kind of the key things I want to impress upon you when you think about applying for a visa. So uh, I just want to also mention that last year, the embassy gave out 4,148 educational visas. So that's quite high, I would mm -hmm. say. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks for that, Diego. I think we're ready to answer questions. Yes. We have one from Lenny Escanuela from Twitter. And Lenny asks, how can I study in the US? Well, um, basically, you'd have the first step would be to evaluate your your aptitude 
I mean, look at yourself. What are your plans? What are your goals? What do you want to achieve if you want to study in the U.S.? And then try to do your research. Look at which universities offer the program that you want to, to pursue in the U.S. Apply to those schools. Try to see if there are scholarships or financial aid available. Uh, apply to those as well. Sometimes, even if the students don't actually need, if, even if your parents are rich, if you, they can um, send you uh, to, to, studies in, to, to study in the U.S., it, we would still recommend that you try to apply for some form of financial assistance. If that will be granted to you, if I mean, you're, you're competitive enough, why not? Um, it helps to have savings also for your parents. Um, visit the Education USA website. It's educationusa.state.gov, and that has the five steps to U.S. study. And it's a wealth of information there. Um, all the steps are outlined. It gives you links. It gives you videos, testimonies of successful Filipinos or other nationalities who have gone and applied and have been admitted and are currently studying in the U.S. And just to follow up on that, there's not anything we're looking for specifically on what you plan to study in the United States. Uh, if you want to study nuclear engineering in the United States, you're welcome to do so. If you want to study poetry in the United States, you're welcome to do so. We're not going to really look at what you're going to study so much as the other things I mentioned, your, the viability to pay for your education, what you plan to do when you return. So that's more important than any actual subject you want to study. Um, but like I said, the United States has all kinds of different subjects you can study. So if you're really interested in something that you think you can only study in America, make sure you mention that when you apply for your visa because that will make sense to us. Like, why did this person want to leave the Philippines, pay all this money, and come all the way to the United States to study English? Well, oh, well, that doesn't make much sense because they have English here. But if you have something like um, nuclear engineering or American studies or American political science, that's a little different. That makes more sense just to an officer. Okay. Also, you can also contact... Um Contact me at the PIF office. Um, we see advices by appointment. So you can drop us an email at educationusa at fulbright.org.ph or Facebook. I think everybody is now on Facebook. So that's uh, simply educationusa.philippines on Facebook. Yes. And I think one thing I also want to mention is the minute you, you understand that you've been accepted to to a U.S. university or a college, that does not necessarily mean you get the visa. There's two. That's two separate things going on there. Um, but the minute you do get accepted, please apply for a, a, a visa. You can apply for the visa very long ahead of time before you need to leave. And that's something we recommend so you don't have to wait till last minute and maybe you, the timing will be bad and you miss your flight or something like that. Uh, so we recommend that the minute you get accepted, please apply for a visa, even if it's months from when you need to leave. You have uh, 120 days before your program start date, before you, uh, you can apply for your student visa. And mm -hmm. you can also apply for the visa, but you cannot go to the United States more than 30 days before your classes mm -hmm. start. Exactly. That's a very com kind of confusing rule. Mm -hmm. uh, however, you can also stay after you graduate for about 30 days. And that's the idea is that you will come back to the Philippines where you have ties, where you have family, and where you want to continue your life. Diego, I get um, this question quite a lot. Some of my students who have, I've seen um, at the center, they do have their B1, B2 visas. Yes. And uh, one question is, if I apply for a student visa, what happens to my B1, B2 visa? And the second is, Okay, with the F1 visa, I cannot enter the U.S. 30 days prior to my right. program start date. However, my family would like to take a vacation with me because I'll be gone for a long time. Right. Can I enter using my B1, B2 visa? And then how do I go about shifting to my F1? That's a great question. And yes, if you have a B1, B2, mm -hmm. and you can also get an F1. We All will right. not cancel out the B1, B2 okay. because those visas are for two different purposes. Mm -hmm. So you can travel to the United States more than 30 days before your classes start. Mm -hmm. And when you enter the United States, you would show them your B1, B2 visa. Mm -hmm. they would, you would say, I'm going to go and to Disneyland, and then I'm going to go study. Mm -hmm. 
Um, however, once you decide you're going to start being uh, start classes mm -hmm. on your F1 visa, you have to change your status. Okay. Now you can do that two ways. One way is you pay a fee and you do that if in the United States at the U.S. Customs Immigration Service. Those okay. offices are all throughout the country. You can go to their website and you can schedule an appointment where you would pay the fee and switch your status. <laughs> Or you can decide, hey, I want to go on a vacation to Canada or Mexico. <laughs> okay, so you'd have to exit the you'd U.S.? You'd have to exit the United and States and then re-enter okay. on your F-1 visa. Mm -hmm. So that's what, oh, those are two options available to them. Yeah. Okay. I think we have an email question here. How fast is the application for student visas? Well, we have a four or five day waiting period for mm -hmm. F-1 visas. That's fast. Yes, it's rather fast. So... Uh, I still recommend you apply with plenty of time. Don't wait until four or five days before you need to get on the plane. <laughs> <Of> <laughs> so uh, that's how long it takes for you to, once you schedule the appointment, when you might be able to get in for an interview. So that's uh, what you will have to do. Um, once you get your visa approved, you'll come to the interview and you'll have an officer like me say, yes, we'll approve your visa or maybe we can approve it for whatever reason. Uh, give us about a week because we need to print out the visa, put it in your passport, and then we'll send it to you via courier. You don't have to come back to the embassy. So just go home and relax yes. and study. So that's how it it's about five days uh, after the visa interview. Correct. Okay. About four or five days, mm -hmm. five, seven days, depending on how busy we are. So. Right. Okay. Here's another um, question via email. I already have a student visa, but I want to go around different states for pleasure before my course starts. Am I allowed to do that? I think that 30 days? Yes, you can do that. Can do that? Less than, if you're coming less than 30 days before your classes start, you can travel around the United States. That's part of the reason we want you to study the United States is you learn about U.S. culture. So you can do that. If you already have a B1, B2, you can do what I suggested earlier and adjust status once you're in the United States. But on an F1, they can enter 30 days prior to their program start yes. date, but they are not restricted to... Let's say only enter the state where they no. will pursue their studies. No, okay, no. That's very you can great. travel within the United States. Great. Yes. <laughs> and please do. <laughs> <laughs> so ask your questions by posting them on Twitter using the hashtag the Visa Hour or on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash manila dot US Embassy. Yes. Alright. Um tell 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 us about um how long have you been here for a um, I've interviewing only, students. Uh, I've yeah. only been interviewing students since January when I got here. Okay. Uh, and I find is there a particular scenario that stuck to you within? Not that not period? as not as great as the other great the first story. That was a fantastic <laughs> story. I, and most of the interviews I have are very straightforward. People mm -hmm. going to study in American <laughs> universities that even I'm like, wow, I'm not that smart. <laughs> <laughs> so there are many smart students here that I, I envy in their knowledge. Um, but I, I haven't had any great story so far. Just impressed by the level of uh, knowledge that the students have in the Philippines. That's good to know. Yeah. So all of you out there who are planning or are interested in studying the U.S., yeah. very impressive if you um, have all your documents, apply for your student visa, and you're good to go. Yeah. Uh, here's another question we got from Facebook. What if I'm already studying in the U.S. and I want to shift <laughs> no, you do not. You have to, um, you, once you enter on F1, you can shift to another university. You can, okay. you can shift to another school as well, but you still have to be considered a full-time student. You can't just decide, well, I'm only going to take one course a month and go work. <laughs> That's not considered what the F1 visa is for. Mm -hmm. So you can change courses. Maybe you found a better program, but um, you do ha you can't, you're allowed to change schools yeah. and subjects. Maybe you want to switch you don't. You understand. You didn't like nuclear science or nuclear engineering. You want to study poetry. Okay. You can still do that on your own. All right. So, so they can shift uh, between programs. Yeah. And not apply for another student visa. No, as long as they're considered a full-time student. Uh -huh. I think the caveat and the the key is that they go to a school and they continue studying full-time. Uh -huh. So. All right. Um, I'd like to let everyone know also that. Um, Education USA Center is not only 
um, located in Manila. We also have seven satellite centers, and all of them are American Corners. We have two up north, um, Ilocos and Baguio City. We have three in the Visayas, Bacolod, Iloilo, and Dumaguete. And down south, we have Davao and Zamboanga. Yeah. So we have volunteer advisors there. If you're not from within Manila area, you can very well visit the closest Education USA Center that's um, available to you. Yes. Uh, we have another great question here. Can I bring my spouse and child while I am studying, completing my studies in the U.S.? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can, but it's uh, you have to explain how you're going to support those your spouse and your child. They're not allowed to work while they're there, so it's going to be very difficult for you to adequately mm -hmm. explain how you'll support a whole family there when you're just a student. It's possible. Maybe your scholarship uh, will pay pay you something, or mm -hmm. you'll have some other opportunities to make some money at the university. Some universities offer some kind of uh, jobs, mm -hmm. um, but it'd be you can apply with your family. It's just you have to explain <laughs> very well how you plan to live there. Mm -hmm. So, All right. So, an F one visa holder can bring the family, but will have to show proof that he or she can support the family it's, while in the U S. Correct. Because right. I mean, most studies are multi year, so you, you mm -hmm. have to take into account yes. how you're going to feed and how is your family for mm -hmm. like two three years. Mm -hmm. Plus insurance. Plus insurance. You need help. You need a lot of things you need to think about. So. Mm -hmm. uh, those are things you have to really explain to the officer, and you have to come and explain how you're going to do that. So it is it is possible, and I have seen applicants do that. So, all right. So. Um, maybe a bit related to that, but I see some high school kids um, ready to go to the U.S. Um, these are 16, 17 year olds. Um, they've been admitted to. A U.S. university, and wow. they're ready to apply for a student visa. Now the question is, um, can their parents accompany them for the visa interview? I've never seen that actually happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> I would recommend that the the the, the parents apply as a B one B two. I don't. Mm -hmm. that's no, I mean a, for the visa um, yeah. interview. For the visa, can, can, they, can the parents accompany? Yes, them? they can. Okay. Yes, they can. Right. Especially if the child is a minor still. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's we that that is uh, allowed, and they can come in. They don't have to be applying for the visa themselves, mm -hmm. but they can accompany the student. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Yeah. So, for for more information about studying in the U.S., uh, visit www.fulbright.org.ph, www.educationusa.state.gov. And on Facebook, we are EducationUSA.Philippines. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter, EducationUSA underscore PH. And um, Fulbright also has different educational exchange programs. Um, so you can visit um, the PIF website, which is Fulbright.org.ph. And on Facebook, also Philippines.FulbrightCommission. Um, and on Twitter, Fulbright underscore ph and I, I also like to mention that I was also a study abroad student many years ago mm -hmm. when I was much younger uh -huh. and I studied when I was in college I went and did study abroad in in England and I think just living in another country and going to a different school system that was in itself almost as important as the courses I took there and I think back to my time uh, as a student there and I I really I'm thankful that I took that opportunity I didn't I kind of pushed myself to do it, and I didn't have many friends doing it. Mm -hmm. But I thought, no, I really need to leave my country to get a better understanding of the world. Mm -hmm. And I thought doing that and living in a different culture was very, 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 very beneficial. So just think of that as well as another benefit to studying abroad. Which is exactly the purpose of um, the different ex exchange programs that PIF administers. We have the Fulbright Graduate Student Program, which allows Filipinos to go to the U.S. and pursue master's or Ph.D. Um, you, we have a list of required documents. Um, it's by open competition. Application for graduate studies under the Fulbright program happens every year, a year in advance. So we actually just closed uh, the application period last week for the Fulbright graduate student program for academic year 2014-2015. So for the academic year 2015-2016, watch out. We will launch the uh, competition period sometime in December, and we'll have a deadline 
in late March of 2014. It's another good question. I think it's more for you. <laughs> what kind of scholarships are available and what kind of documents should I need to prepare to qualify? Hmm. Um, as I said, for, um, for the five programs that we administer, um, it's more for the graduate studies uh, or your graduate programs and it's by op open competition. The required documents are on our website and um, competition is usually December to March of each year. Mm -hmm. so, one last question. I want to take my internship in the United States. Can I go using a student visa? Internships. Internships. That's a very interesting question. There's different types of internships. Mm -hmm. The most common one we see here in the Philippines is, yes, a J-1 type of internship. Mm -hmm. And there's specific requirements for that. Um, so that internship is mainly for students who want to work and learn like different technical skills or trade school, like mm -hmm. culinary arts and things of that sort. Uh, in order to do that, you will have to have studied in a university or a, a school that studied culinary arts, for example, and you want to go to the United States and study and work in a kitchen in the United States to learn how we cook in the United States. Uh, that's what you'll have to do to apply for J-1. You'll have to show that you um, studied in a course that's relevant to what you're going to do in the United States. Mm -hmm. You'll have to go through all these steps I explained earlier. You'll have to pay, pay the fees, pay the service fee as well. Mm -hmm. And you'll have to show a training plan um, that explains what you'll be trying to learn while you're in the United States. So it's not on an F-1 visa then? It's not an F-1, okay. yes. There are internships, other types of internships available, but I'm saying the most popular in the Philippines mm -hmm. is the J-1 type of visa, which is mainly for interns. Yeah. All right. Um, we have another question. Um, can I work while I am a student in the U.S.? Yes, and I think uh, our previous guest told us how he did. Uh, there are some jobs available to people and students, but it's only from the university that you can accept that work. Uh -huh. You're not under an F-1 visa. You're not allowed to go outside the university or the college and work at, say, the local restaurant okay. or the local store. Uh -huh. It's only jobs that the university has that you're allowed to work at. Uh -huh. So. And I believe not more than 20 That's hours correct. per week. Right. Mm -hmm. And the idea is, of course, you're going on a student visa, so you're there to learn, not yes, work. Yes, not to work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, last question. I heard, someone, I heard from someone that after studying in the U.S., you have to stay in your country for two years. Is that true? Uh, probably that someone you heard from uh, went on a J-1 visa, which is an exchange visitor's visa, and that has a restriction to have that J-1 holder return to the home country because, again, the purpose of an exchange program is actually to learn about other cultures and come back, bring back what you've learned and share, share it with your colleagues here, uh, back here in the Philippines. So minimum two years, I would say, but again, um, whenever I advise students, um, I would often let them know my thoughts about um, studying in the U.S. and coming back because it's actually here in the Philippines where you are needed, where your expertise are needed. You study in the U.S., learn as much as you want, and then come home and be the best that you can be here in the Philippines. For those of you, though, who did not go on a program that was funded by the United States government, mm -hmm you can reapply for a visa and come to the United States. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's specific right. for those programs where the funding was financed by the U.S. government. You must stay in the Philippines for two years, as you explained. Yes. All right, so for those questions we won't be able to answer, please send them to educationusa at fulbright.org.ph and also check out our website. It's www fulbright.org.ph And we'll also have our blog available about visas, which I'll have available on the website link soon. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, both of you. Um, you've learned an awful lot. Uh, we've given you lots of different websites and ways to get information Internet and these days, no, that's in state. So, oh, wait, I'm in Michigan State land now. So, uh, 
we've given you lots of websites and you're young people so you always use websites and all of that but I do just want to let you know that we have con and we have our seven centers at different universities so for example in Baguio it's at San Luis University uh -huh. and you can get that information by going to the PIF website. That's correct. So there are these seven advising centers around the Philippines, but everybody, I know you love the internet, but there's also <laughs> real life people. Yes. <laughs> okay. So again, uh, www.fulbright.org.ph, Facebook on Facebook, Manila.us Embassy. We have Philippines.FulbrightCommission, EducationUSA.Philippines, those are all on Facebook, mm -hmm. Twitter, U.S. Embassy Manila, and we have a visa blog, Visa Satisfied Voyager, blogs.usembassy.gov slash Philippines. So there's a lot of information online, and we hope to bring you more alumni like MJ because I really think hearing it from him mm -hmm. is a lot better for all of us than hearing it from me or Diego or <laughs> even Khan because he was there. Here, come over here with us again. <laughs> so here he is. Here's MJ. Say hi, MJ. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay? So I hope this was useful. And this is just an introduction. There's a lot more information. And we are so happy that you joined us. And we hope you keep asking questions. And we wish you the best of luck on your future studies in the United States or wherever they may be. Thank you. Salamat po. Thank, thank you very much, all of our guests and our technical team. Thank you. See you soon. Bye.